Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vintage Super League. I'm Luis Scott Vergas here with uh, the victorious Chris Pakula. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be salty tonight. Although <laughs> I threatened saltiness if I lost, but let me tell you, I'm I'm drained. Like yeah, that I mean that that was an intense match. Not only because we got to see games one and two, both decks goldfish, which is which is always kind of cool, but then game three was just absurd. Yeah, game three was. Uh, I mean, I have no idea. Like you're you're probably going to tell me I made some huge sequencing error, and it would not surprise <laughs> me. Like. No, actually, you played better than I did. My uh, armchair was like, you know, quarterbacking was like, oh, he's just going to name Lotus with Revoker. And then you named Dak. I'm like, oh, wait, that makes so much more sense. Like, I, I mean, I, obviously you had that possibility, you know, ready to go coming in. But uh, I, I certainly uh, think that's what won you the game. He had a Dak fade in his hand for a couple turns. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, what, a, what a crazy game. Like, I thought I had it. When he vampiric for Wasteland, I thought, oh, yeah. I got this. I got this. Like, it was, it was amazing how game one – it was so frustrating that both times in this tournament where my opponent has played turn one Jace, I drew zero man lands. And I was yep. like, I have eight man lands in my deck, I draw none. And now this game, he has the Sabo's web on turn one, and I never see one. It's yeah, yeah. And when he vamped for Wasteland and you and we saw that you had the second workshop in hand, it's like, this is not going to go the way Rich wants it to go. No, like, yeah, yeah. Very risky like, play. But I mean, I think it makes sense. Like, he... he you know, he knows that I can't, ca I, he knows that he's, he's shut off eight of my lands with the, or well, 12 of my lands, really. Or, yeah, so, so, like, his hand wasn't great at the time, which makes that play better, I think, because if his hand's great, then a vamp plus a great hand usually leads leads to a win, right? You can just get whatever you're missing. His hand was, like, pretty medium at that point, so going for kind of like, the you know, the free win, like, opportunity, what made sense at the time, given the information he had. Right. As it turned out, you had another workshop, and then the game proceeded from that to be a really close game where, obviously, a Vampiric Tutor would have won him the game many points in the game. Right. Yeah, especially once he had an uh, academy that made a million mana. Right, right. He, he actually drew really well that game. He, he played Shattering Spree the turn he drew it, as I'm sure you, you figured out. Uh, <laughs> he, he, you know, he drew Brainstorming to Time Walk, but Scul Sculpting Steel actually made it so Mere Battlesphere was not the card he needed there. Right, I mean, that's a very common thing in Vintage that... Uh... I found a lot of the plays that you would think would beat the stack stack stopped working after they printed Metamorph because it was just too easy for them to clone their way out of it. Yeah, I've complained about that many times. Uh, basically, all the cards that I used to rely on to, to beat stacks, or at least a lot of them, kind of get blanked by Metamorph. Metamorph means that they just have outs to tinker now. Like, that's the biggest one. You can't tinker yeah. for Colossus and expect it to work anymore. They can just... I mean, look what, look what Josh against me, right? It's Went for blight steel, and I just made two blight steels. <laughs> yep, I mean that—that that is exactly what the card does, as well as being a backup sphere, a backup lodestone, a backup soul ring. Like, I think that is one of the cards that has made stacks the best, or given it the most options in the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, I mean, that and the fact that they print a new kind of sphere every like two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, lodestone and metamorph. I guess I'm always terrible at actually remembering when cards are printed, but lodestone metamorph were those consecutive blocks. Is that? Uh, yeah, it, it was Zendikar, then it was Scars of Mirrodin. So, right, so. so yeah, that was like right back to back. And then, you know, they, they're using the, the workshop cheat, which is print artifacts that are too expensive to see play in standard, but with workshop are great, which lets them like switch up vintage while not impacting standard, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, like, they, it's like those, these cards are so, are so useless in standard that they, they don't have to do like the scavenging ooze thing and... Or, or Baleful Strix and put them in like some weird set that's not legal. They right, just right. Print it in a regular set. Well, that seems like a legitimate way to do it too, but it is kind of like that's less elegant than just putting you know delve cards in that are great in eternal formats, but don't don't you know up up people standard as much as they right. would. Right. Um, yeah, I I thought after losing game one and looking at the two sideboards, you were a, a pretty heavy underdog to win two games plus four. Yeah, it's never as bad as it looks because. So many of the games just involve them never casting anything. <laughs> it's true. And given that you were on the play one of the games, like even if he sides in, you know, six, eight cards, with him on the draw, he, you can't be that bad off because you have so many draws that just win you the game. I mean the real thing that changes it, to be honest, is this is that the uh is like the Sabo's web type thing. The fact that he has normally even if they have all that stuff, they don't have like a hammer, right? Like they yeah. want for one trade, they can still just lose to a card off the top. But if they want for one trade and then they have some death blow that I can't come back from. That makes it really hard. Definitely. It looks like the players are ready, so we're going to head down and watch uh, Randy against Dave Williams here. We actually saw this matchup in week one of, of the new decks here, so that was two weeks ago. 
we head down. And uh, Randy lost pretty convincingly to the mono blue deck that has mind break traps in it. <laughs> mind break trap, to be fair. Right, Randy's uh, Randy's deck is certainly the one of the most capable of of, of being vintagey. Yeah, I mean, the, when people think vintage, they think Randy's deck. Right. So, looks like we're missing one of Randy's cards, and that's the City of Brass that makes this a keepable hand. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is what they think of vintage, except they don't know about turns two through four, where you just draw and do nothing because your opponent force a will. Right. Which, I mean, again, what we saw, you know, in, in earlier in the earlier match of this matchup. Right. And it looks like Dave mulled to six. If Dave's on the play, this hand is pretty good because he can have double mana drain up. If he's on the draw, then he's a little vulnerable because Randy has, you know, potentially a lot of turn one plays that win him the game or at least put him in a pretty good spot. Yeah. Does he just, I don't know what he, it's kind of dangerous to lead with mana crypt and then go for the long game. Like back to basics with mana crypt in play. <laughs> yeah. I, it, I like Dave just going Tarn Lotus, and then just hoping that he could, has a chance to use both drains at once. Though I don't know if Randy's going to let him do that. Uh, again, I'm not. Oh, sorry. I'm not 100 percent sure who's on the play here. It looks like Dave deciding whether he wants to mulligan, but I think you keep this hand. Yeah. Do you uh, do you know much about the origin of their mono blue build here? I haven't talked to anybody about this deck yet. I, I'm pretty sure Ephra came up with it based on just the cards he wanted to play. Like, he, I think he just, I mean, he knew he was playing against you. I think he wanted to play Back to Basics and Energy Flux. And I right. don't know if it, if that's where exactly where it started, but it kind of went along the path of, like, what cards are good. Like, getting to play uh, Back to Basics in general, I think, is a pretty decent choice. And then it, their deck is good against uh, other other blue decks, I think. I mean, I think that's part of the reason that they chose the deck. Um, my draws against Dave were just absurd. So it, we didn't yeah. really see, you know, it, it working out there. It's sort of a weird deck for mana crypt i think yeah they have four jace and four trinket mage so i think they're pretty yeah. and and two consecrated things so they're pretty priced into it randy of course leading with oath of druids here and i think dave thought so long about keeping because he was on the draw because his hands obviously doesn't have a force of well right yeah i just found that i when i was playing vintage a lot i died to my own mana crypt more than i expected so yeah i to then play it in a deck without... Like, they don't have Tinker, right? So They, they do not have Tinker. Again, the 4 Jace 2 Sphinx means that they have a decent amount of things that get out of that, but yeah. Right. I think if you're Dave here now, now that you're on the draw and Randy has a tap land, I think you just go for it. You, you're not going to die to Mana Crypt before you win or lose the game via other methods, though I, it is a real concern. I, I've lost games to Mana Crypt, too. Yeah. <laughs> so Ra Randy's deck, his lands are all Lotus Petals now, but if he draws a Forbidden Orchard, he, he almost just wins. So one of the cool th things about the uh, about the list that Dave is running here is that <laughs> there's the Forbidden Orchard. All right, that was that was easy. Uh, is that they do have main deck Graft Digger's Cage to get with Trinket Mage. So Dave now has five cards you can draw to Graft Digger's Cage and Lockout Oath. Otherwise, he is going to lose this game to Gristlebrand pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean Tr Trinket Mage has been a really huge part of Vintage like the past couple years. Like basically, you know, in like the East Coast vin uh, Vintage scene, like yeah. The old Trinket Mage, uh, Vendillion Click, Restoration, and then what eventually morphed into even having Restoration Angels. That, Yeah. So I actually really don't like this play from Randy. Uh, casting a Ponder here is fine, except now it gives Dave the out of finding Jace, bouncing the token, and then your Orchard doesn't untap. Like, I think that actually makes you vulnerable to too many cards you would not be vulnerable to, and if the Oath works, the Ponder doesn't matter. Yeah, I got. I think I agree with you, and I, I'm guessing that that is just a line that Randy's never seen or thought about. Like, it's a pretty interesting situation. Yeah. Um, I wonder if Dave mana drains here. I mean, it doesn't really do much. I guess you. the only reason to do it is to stop Randy from maybe seeing another uh, <laughs> Orchard, but that seems kind of optimistic. Uh, yeah, I guess, man, this is... Oh yeah, the, the chat actually points out that Dave has repeal. Let's see, he's got two repeals in his deck. So oh, yeah, repeals, okay. I, I, yeah, I, so, I was going to ask that and then forgot. So Dave actually has, looks like 11 outs plus, no, 12 outs plus a couple card draw spells. That's that's not, you know, unbelievable. You know, it's a little little more than a one out of every four cards, a little less than one out of every five. So, I mean, Dave, Dave's got a shot here. He's not as dead as most mono blue decks would be against an Oath of Druids. Because the back-to-basics means that there's only going to be one token per Orchard. 
Yeah, that's pretty, that's very, yeah, because what, what is the point of even, I guess he's pondering to try to get a Force of Will? Yeah, but Randy's deck doesn't actually play it. It's just the all-in combo deck. So. Oh, yes. Jeez. I guess so, yeah. I, I should look at the list. I sound like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and actually, if Dave draws repeal, he can just repeal the oath. It, I mean, it's a little riskier, but you have double manager in your hand, and Randy can't currently cast it. So this is a big draw step for Dave. I mean, this is the draw step. Yeah, especially if your plan is to oath up Gristlebrand, don't you just want to save that mana anyway? I, 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 I definitely agree. I think that it, you don't really need to do it. Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting situation, but like, given uh, given his deck list, I, I agree. I don't think the ponder makes sense. But like I said, it's such an odd, such an odd situation. The back to basics with the oath with the orchard. <laughs> right, it's not the one that normally comes up. So, Dave did miss. The game isn't just over, but Randy's going to get to draw a lot of cards. Grind with no mana at the start of his turn, but Dave doesn't actually even have an answer to the Gristlebrand, so Dave would now need to draw a way to stop Gristlebrand. Right. Which uh, he currently does not have. Well, if Randy can steal game one with an oath here, then... Well, I gotta say, I'm... I am, uh, I'm happy to see this, this could be this... The game tonight with the Sabo's Web and Back to Basics not getting it done. Because <laughs> those are very beautiful take, cards. Yeah, take that. Yeah. I guess Randy could have also decked himself with the two Gristlebrands being like the last two cards, but that, that's the pretty outlier situation as well. So I'm pretty sure you draw seven here. I don't think you, necess you, don't, you draw 14, though. Like, if your first seven can't get it done, then I, you might actually want to hold. I don't know. So this first seven is pretty good. Wow. Yeah. There's there's so he has Chromox, Lotus, Dark Ritual, and Zen Ancestral. Yeah. And a Thought Seize too, so we could actually see if Dave has answers to, to the Mind's Desire, because Mind's Desire is one of the cards you want to set up the most. Yeah, he has Burning Wish, right? Jeez. Yeah, Randy ha kind of has it all this game. He can imprint like a bargain if he wants black mana here. And so, if he it, even if he totally fizzles. He may just attack with Crystal Brand for the win, like you pointed out. Yeah, I mean, he's not. It's not like he's losing the game to to Dave's, art, you know, one spirit token here. I think it's pretty low cost to to try to go for it here, though, because if again, like you said, if yeah, he fizzles, yeah. he still just wins with Crystal Brand a lot of the time. He still has another seven cards in the bank if he really needs them. I guess the only thing he would need to be careful about is maybe like did he just, he just imprinted like maybe just not. Uh, somehow like going trying to go off in a way such that you exile cards that you might need for a second wave that's the only risk i guess right and bargain with a gristle brand out is you know pretty much a blank so right. that that one's pretty safe he even kept Oracle's recall which can generate storm count if he needs to i'm just trying I to like if if he were to get stopped and then have jace bounce his gristle brand just make sure right. he has the cards in his deck to, he has the other gristle brand in there somewhere though. but yeah. then that's a risk it could be on bottom of your deck yeah i mean these are outlier situations, but those are how Randy's going to lose. He's not going to lose any normal games here. He's going to lose like when Gristlebrand's in the bottom three cards of your deck. Right, right. He only has to worry about what what's the big what disasters do I need to avoid because the regular games I just win. I like the I like the mana drain from Dave there. Drain is expensive. Dark Ritual's cheap, and Randy has a lot of cards in hand. I think, especially knowing that Randy's got a bunch of thought seizes and duresses in his deck, you, draining Ritual makes sense. So if you're Randy, I'm kind of tempted just to go land go here. Dave didn't play anything last turn. If he had a JC, he would have played it. If he had a uh, a repeal, he would have done it. I mean, there's not much that Dave can have. So I think just waiting a turn with an extra land in play and then a couple I of... I think you have to thought seize just to make sure the mana drain mana doesn't... Oh, he only needs a mana drain for one. Well, I, uh, I like thought seizing, but I don't think you want to like do anything else. Like... I, I mean, I don't think you want to try to go for like a Burning Wish, Yogmas Will, or anything like that. I, I do it's, like thought seizing, though. The mana drain mana doesn't really matter. It's Black Lotus and play over there. And... Yeah, and Mana Crypt. But yeah, I mean, there's no real drawback to casting Thought Seize here. You're probably going to lose to the top of anything else, but that still makes me want to just cast Thought Seize here. Yeah. It's funny. This is the. Uh... Last week, Randy also almost lost a game because he cast a spell kind of for no reason, right? Yeah, he he almost ended up one black mana short by duressing once he already like had a resolved bargain. And, and probably and, gonna make him be extra careful now. 
Yeah. But like you said, he didn't really need to ponder before, and he and he still did it. Kind of. I mean, I guess Randy can ancestral here and like try to do something. Is that good? Yeah. It's- it's hard to analyze because so many, he just wins so many of the games. Like we have to figure out the subset of games where it matters what he does and what's the best play in those games. Yeah, and and I think that just casting thought sees is the safest, and you don't need to play a an unsafe game here. You should just play a safe game because you're winning. Right. Not. I mean, it's not casting thought sees seems crazy. Like that's you just have. I mean. Yeah. I. I mean, I think Randy's really considering. I mean, he. Whether he wants to do much more than that, not less than that. Less than that doesn't make as much sense to me. Well, I guess less than that is the answer. <laughs> hmm. So, if Rick, if Randy was at one less life, I would buy it a little more because then you 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 don't necessarily get to Gristlebrand. But given that he would, or two less life rather, given that he still gets to Gristlebrand, uh, I think the casting thought is there is pretty free. So uh, Dave, of course, is just going to pass and wish he could just concede because <laughs> now Randy's going to get to smash Dave down to six, go up to 18, draw millions of cards up Crystal Brandon, probably just combo off and win that turn. Yeah, so D- Dave knows that the game is over. Yeah. That's what, yeah. I mean, once the Lotus is in play, it's... If we can take a look at Dave's deck list, we can see how he can board here. See what juicy sideboard options he has because... They've got some, but not not actually a ton, I don't believe. So Dave has most of the cards you would want in this matchup in his main deck. So it's kind of unfortunate that he had to mulligan to a hand that does not have Force of Will here. Uh, so yeah, Randy does not have a ton of sideboard options because he's playing a Burning Wish deck. Dave, on the other hand, uh, has a deck that could have a sideboard here, but it looked like they, they slanted them pretty beatly to beat exactly you because they have <laughs> three energy flux and a bunch of steel sabotages. So Graf Digger's Cage is a good one because uh, it stops both Oath and Yagmas Will. Other than yeah. that, I mean, I guess you'd board in Steel Sabotage because it stops the artifact mana because it's better than having... Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to figure out what Dave sideboards out because it's Steel Sabotage versus Trinket Mage, I don't really know what card's better. I... Yeah, I guess... I guess Dave just put in a couple Graph Digger's Cages and I might guess a couple Steel Sabotages and actually we're back to the match. Oh, or not. So, I like Steel Sabotage a little more than Misdirection, I think. I mean, if you look at Randy's list, he's even got thought, a lot of Duresses. And Duress does not get Misdirected. Thoughtsies does, but it's still not even super effective. Yeah. I like Repeal. Spell Snare actually seems fine because it counters Burning Wishing and Oath of Druids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. As well as a couple one ofs. I like Trinket Mage because it gets Graph Digger's Cage. I and mean, one of the wee- easiest ways for you to lose is the way you just did, which is b- via Oath of Druids. So, yeah, I don't know if Steel Sabotage is really good enough. I'm... Yeah. I mean, I guess you could, t- you could again, play it over like one of the misdirections, and maybe you could take out a Back to Basics, because the first one is okay, the second one's not good, and you don't need it that much. Randy's not using his lands four times, right? Like, he's using them, like, twice. So, Ra- what does Randy have? Defense Grid in his sideboard? Is that right? Well, actually, given that Randy has one, he only has the one defense grid. I've, uh, I've played, I've played this deck with, with like three defense grids, and there you definitely want the steel sabotage against one defense grid. I don't know, maybe it's okay. I mean, look at how many artifacts Randy does have. I mean, there are cards that come out early, so you don't get to, and they they cost zero mana mostly, so that is a you know a strike against it. But I still think it might be better than like a misdirection. Randy, meanwhile, getting to board in the defense grid, maybe another thought seize because you're not going to wish for it that much. Maybe a strip mine. So, I don't know. Not a whole lot. I mean, the deck, Randy's deck does not play with much of a sideboard. All right. I don't know if Randy cares about uh, the back to basics enough to bring in Nature's Claim. I suspect he doesn't. Yeah, th- that doesn't seem like a winning strategy. It kills, actually, Grafticker's Cage. So, Randy probably brings it Oh, in. yeah, yeah. Cage. Man. Talk sure. about cards that have recently done weird things to Vintage. Oh, I like Dave's hand. A lot more than I like Randy's hand. I mean, Randy's hand, I think, is keepable because, you know, you don't have an oath, so you're not vulnerable to Graph Digger's Cage, and you have Thoughtseize plus turn three Necro, which is a decent hand, at least. But uh, Dave's hand is, is actually very good. So if you're Dave, you just lead with Library and say go and hope you don't get Thoughtseize. <laughs> oh, wow. Ah. I guess, 
I mean, it's got to be better than any other option, right? Like, library, Sapphire, Time Walk, and say go on turn two doesn't sound that appealing. No. So, as it turns out, Randy has the thought seeds, so Dave's library is going to be delayed by a turn. But the fact that Dave has two free counters in his hand, plus mental missteps of three total, means that he can just not play anything turns two and three to try to get library going. Yeah, yeah, it seems, seems really good. Especially against Randy's hand, which is turn one thought seeds, turn two, land go, unless he draws something. Pretty easy mental misstep here. I mean, that's what the card's for. <laughs> so even if Dave draws an island, I like saying just saying go here. Yeah, I, I, with, with time walk for sure. I, I don't think it's close. Yeah. What, what about if he draws a consecrate sphinx? <laughs> Not the best. Dave getting hit by was one one of his two non-basic lands here, so the library's not active, but luckily for Dave, Randy didn't draw anything, any action to play turn two, so Dave now gets to get library going, which makes his odds of winning dramatically higher than if he had to use Force of Will, like if Randy drew Mox Jet, right? Yeah, and Dave had both, to Force of Will? They both may have literally drawn the worst card in their deck. <laughs> yes. Consecrated Sphinx and Time and Tendrils are both pretty bad. At least Consecrated Sphinx gets to pitch to Force of Will. <laughs> That's true, actually. So Dave's still in a spot, the, the ritual at one turn too late. Dave's still in a spot where after he forces this necro that Randy is basically has to play, uh, Dave is a, he's not going to build a library, but I still think that puts Dave in a pretty good spot here. He can just pass and do nothing for another turn. Or if he draws Lotus, he can play Consecrated Sphinx. Randy has a hard time winning with Consecrated Sphinx in play, I think, as, as do most vintage decks. I'd actually be inclined to pitch the misdirection, not even the consecrated Sphinx, because I think having Sphinx in hand just makes Mana Drain and Lotus such good draws. I don't know. Misdirection only counters Thoughtseize, and Randy does not have more of those, so oh, that would have been my pitch. Ancestral. But... Well, that's true. Ancestral, you're right. Not a card Randy has a ton of either. <laughs> so Dave now... Playing the land, I guess he's just going to go for the back to basics. That has to make the most sense, right? Like, you don't get to library anymore, sure, but you you basically triple stone Rain Randy. You Armageddon him. Yeah, I, I think that this is a game where... Yeah, I, I think that's right. It, it, he's too low on cards anyway. So Dave's going to cycle Time Walk first uh, actually do like that. I think regardless, actually, Dave wants to just play back to basics with a library on tap. No reason to, no reason to lock that down. Not that you're going to get to use it more than once, but might as well leave it on tapped, I guess. And it's not like Time Walk's going to get much better. You don't have a ton of creatures in your deck. Hmm. I don't know if you tap library to play Graph Digger's Cage here. I think you... I mean, Yawgmoth's Will is not very close to being being live and yeah, i don't uh, see the point of, of leaving up the sapphire but dave's just gonna cast both i guess i'll just cast the cage yeah i i would have been inclined to slow roll the cage for a turn but i guess this way no, you I don't mean, get thought seized i i guess <laughs> just, once again he's like i'm 100 percent. i think he thinks he's winning this game so yeah maybe you play around a time walk oath this way maybe that's safer maybe that's one of the ways you lose I mean, this is actually one of those interesting games where, where you, like, you look at the board and you, you, Dave has to be feeling pretty good, but it's not like his deck is full of tutors. Like if he has, if he has a couple of bricks and Randy is slow rolling artifact mana, which he is. Honestly, the back to basics isn't stopping Randy from doing anything. Right. Because <laughs> Randy doesn't have any spells to play anyway. So like, Randy's actually not that unhappy that Back to Basics has come out. I think Randy would have been losing faster to the library. Not that Dave's play was wrong. I think it was definitely right, but it is funny that Randy's hand is all mana, so the Back to Basics is not actually impacting him very much. I like playing the, the, the mocks here for Dave. Just, I mean, Hardcast, Mindbreak Trap is a thing. What if Randy like, you know, plays one Dark Ritual then plays a Yawgmoth's Bargain or something? Yeah, it's still only four mana, though, right? Oh, but well, Mindbreak Trap. I'm sorry, I'm thinking Misdirection. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Dave's looking pretty good now, because now that he's, like, two counters ahead of Randy, plus not even counting Misdirection and Mental Misstep, it means that Randy has to draw multiple cards to get out of this, and 
at that point, Rand, Dave's draw steps, I think, accumulate more value than Randy's now that Randy's so far behind. And then the back to basics starts to matter if you have to try to force spells through counters. Like. Yeah. I actually like Randy not pondering here. I think one of Randy's best ways to win is, uh, is a big Mind's Desire. Not that he has Mind's Desire or big Tendrils. Not that he knows about Mind Break Trap, which is actually going to make it so that plan's not that feasible, but he still has to play the hand he's dealt. And uh, loading up spells and casting a Tendrils makes a little bit of sense here. Dave keeping the token back to block Randy's haste creatures. <laughs> Actually, him just double-clicking on it and accidentally not attacking. Hmm. An unplayable oath, because there's a Graph Digger's Cage sitting there. Yeah, now I'm wondering, now knowing what Randy's outs are, maybe, I wonder if he said what it in the nature. I'm sure he did, like you said. Once he knows about the cages, and he knows Dave's going to bring them all in. Yeah, and then hitting back to basics not really your highest priority, but it means that it won't be like a literal dead card if in that situation. Dave looking for looks like a mana drain. I mean, Dave does not need anything else here. That actually orchard token has a decent shot of being the card that ends the game. <laughs> Cuz Dave right now because Randy can only use each of his lands once, Dave might have enough counters that he can counter every relevant spell Randy casts the rest of the game. Right, I mean, Randy needs to draw a, a, like a jet followed by discard or something. Yeah, some combination of cards that is pretty unlikely to draw. Ooh, there's the Nature's Claim. So it's pretty bad for Randy if he goes for Oath and Nature's Claim and it doesn't work because Dave just lets Oath resolve and counters Nature's Claim. But I think he might have to. He's losing already. It's not like he's beating a Sensei's top. Dave's draw step is just better than his, so... Randy might just want to go for it here. Yeah. He can misdirect the nature's claim onto the oath. <laughs> yeah, which is even funnier. Does Randy have enough spells to, to tendrils? I mean, again, he's got Dave's got mind break traps, so the tendrils doesn't work. But Randy might have looks like close enough to enough spells. If he finds a spell off ponder, he could, especially if he assumes Dave's going to cast maybe one counter spell. Randy could maybe uh, go for the tendrils kill, lose to mind break trap, but still have his best shot of winning by doing that. Yeah, I think Randy's going to be pretty upset if he finally draws the cards that allows him to go for this. and then Dave plays the one Mind Break Trap they have access to. It is funny that their deck plays zero Fluster Storms. They're, they're not concerned about uh, instants and sorceries. Yeah, Randy's yeah. going for it. He found a Lotus Petal. Were there, uh, were there straight zero spell pierces in this in this tournament so far? No, I'm playing against two tonight. Steve's got two in his deck. All right. And two misdirections. He's got he's got some action. Yeah, the uh, the options available for counter spells in vintage are vast. Yeah, and it's interesting. There's there's legitimate reasons to play basically all of them. Yeah. So, Randy, starting with the Oath, hoping to, to get in a fight over it. The chat brings up a good reason for Dave to counter this. Abrupt Decay, except Dave has Misdirection. So, <laughs> Abrupt Decay is still not an out. <laughs> this is actually kind of awkward now. If Randy goes for Nature's Claim and Dave lets it resolve, then Randy can't Tendrils Dave out. But he's, he has to assume Dave's going to counter it. Like, you can't let Nature's Claim kill Graft Digger's Cage when you have an Oath in play. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Randy, at this point, he's already, you know, he's cast five spells. So he goes to, he gets the tendrils for 16, 18 if he assumes the nature's claim gets countered. And I, I don't see a reason for him to, to, to do anything but go for it. I mean, he's already kind of there. The real question is, what does Dave do to this nature's claim? Does he, he can misdirect it. He could just mental misstep it because, again, mental misstep doesn't have millions of targets. I think you meant, I think you mental misstep it. Yeah, seems like the the best line. You don't really want to pitch a card to misdirection. So Randy's going to Dark Ritual, and Dave's going to sit there and be very content because he's got Mind Break Trap, so he knows he's safe. His next barrier to entry is making sure that he doesn't cast Mind Break Trap with the Tendril's trigger on the stack. Because <laughs> right. that, that would be disappointing. Yeah, there has definitely been some... Uh... Yeah, we saw in your match uh, that... The Mishra's Workshop mana was not used up before the Ancient Tomb mana, so you were not yep. able to cast Dismember. Yeah. Though, I don't believe that impacted the outcome of that game. You were really no, no. I, I, In fact, I don't... 
I don't think it would have happened if I thought it was likely to impact the game because I would have been more careful. <laughs> yeah. That game was pretty much a lost cause. So Randy's making a play I like here, which is playing around uh, mental misstep by just casting the tendrils instead of casting dark ritual. I believe he's got enough mana to do that. Yeah, oh, that is a, that is a good play. So Dave's got to let the trigger resolve, and then he can cast mind break trap and just put it on the stack targeting. No, no, no! Don't do it. <laughs> I see him clicking on the mind break trap. He plays a lot of Magic Online, so he's got an. Well, he he may not have ever cast a mind break trap. I mean, I cast it for the first time on a bunch of spells like just the other day. So you, do you think he's calling Ephra right now to ask how to click? Well, calling him from the other room. I mean, because they, they actually live together now. So. Oh, I didn't realize. They, I never know when Dave's actually in. Yeah. <laughs> in Vegas. But uh. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty nomadic, so obviously, like, I don't know where he is, literally is this exact location. But yes, Dave, let it resolve, or let the tr tendrils trigger resolve. Now he's going to cast Mind Break Trap and then just click on each tendrils copy. It's a little easier in paper, because you just say Mind Break all your tendrils, but yeah, it's not actually that hard. Dave has to click, like, seven times or whatever. Vintage is a lot easier on paper. Yeah. Actually, it's just Storm. It's a lot easier. It's mostly <laughs> Storm. Um yeah. It does. It is a nice magical and keeps track of everything for you. So there's no disputing there. I've gotten in some situations where people are they have disagreements about what exactly is floating, <laughs> which is not fun. But uh, I don't know. Some some of it's easier, some of it's harder. I like it. I like that priority is very well defined because there's a lot of priority passes in vintage that like really matter. And magic online, there's no debate. You yeah. know whose turn it is and whose whose time it is to play. So. Oh yeah, I I think it's great. I just think that I'm I'm just personally scared of my. Uh... I'm somehow going to misclick. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> taking a look, Dave actually asked in the in the Vintage Super League chat, in our chat, wow. <laughs> for confirmation about Mind Break Trap. Wait, you might as well double check. I mean, if he gets this wrong, oh, he's dead. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, no, one, no one wants to see someone lose on a misclick here. Yeah. No one really, I don't even think that uh, Randy's ready for that. So. No, I mean, Ray, Randy wants to win, maybe more than anyone else, because Randy just has his incredible competitive drive. But I don't think Randy wants to win via misclick. That just doesn't make any sense. That, no. I mean, again, it defeats the purpose of what we're all doing here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nobody wants to do that. Which, in, in some people's cases, try to make it so their opponents cannot cast spells or have fun, but... <laughs> I, I'm actually... I, I'm going to be right back. I spilled some water like a real idiot here, so... What's <laughs> this mind break craft is, is too graphic for Chris. He just cannot take it. <laughs> so... Mind break trap. I assume if you hover over it, it's is now targeting all of the tendrils. And boom, they're all outlined in red there. And soon all the tendrils are going to disappear, along with Randy's chances of winning here. I mean, at this point, Randy's got a mana crypt that's damaging him. Six, seven lands that do not untap. Almost all the lands in his deck. And then a, a Mox Opal. Chris, you missed it. Randy was able to win. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Randy might have... A zero percent chance of winning. We were actually discussing it in in your game one at one point, what percent chance you had to win, like in the middle of the game, and I said less than one percent. And uh, this, I think, is actually zero because Dave can attack Randy down to six, even assuming Randy wins all the mana crypt flips. He has to draw like spells and mana, and Dave has multiple counter spells. So, I, I think we're going to see a game three here. Though Dave is, of course, still playing correctly by like using Sensei's top. There's no reason to assume things here. Yeah, and this is. Uh... We say back to basics won't matter a lot, but this is an example of where Randy doesn't get a second volley. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. The, the funny thing was, back to basics, I do not think impacted the outcome of this game in any way because Randy never drew more spells than he had land. But it does mean that Randy now cannot draw his way out of it. Like you said, he can't peel a time twister and be back in the game. Right. Granted, Dave has three counter spells in his hand, so right, that wasn't yeah. happening anyway. But let's just assume these things weren't true. Dave, I guess just getting Lotus here, so you can have more counter spells up. Yeah. Or, or to just show off, you know, that he has a black Lotus. Because I don't think, it, I mean, I, I would assume no, no one in the league has card availability issues, but I noticed that you weren't playing with black Lotus. That yourself, is true. So. <laughs> and by the way, after playing the deck, I am one hundred percent convinced the deck should not have black Lotus. I, I believe that you believe that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I can't. I even when I, yeah, I. I'm actually, I'm actually not. I'm actually not arguing with you because, like, I I don't. I, I think that there's actually 
more reasons to not play Lotus than I initially thought. So I'm willing to concede there's a chance you may be right for sure. Yeah. I will not stop making fun of it because it's very oh, fun yeah, to me personally. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not 100% convinced on Dark Seal Juggernaut. I am I am 100% convinced on the on the role of that card. Though it was good that game. It, 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 it you know it it got rich. It, it was an indestructible threat. Yeah, I mean, it was actually good against um Menendian. Um but his draws were just a little too uh too rough on me. But I don't oh. I don't think a, a different creature would not have done it. No, no. That was that, that match was close by the way. That was that was that was a pretty intense match too. Yeah. So looks like we're gonna see a game three. Uh, still, not a ton of difference between games one, two, and three here, which is interesting. A lot of vintage matchups are very swingy. Like your matches are obviously incredibly different pre and post board. Oh yeah. Whereas, and whereas this matchup, draw. neither player is sideboarding a ton of cards. I mean, there's just not much. These decks are constructed to change. I mean, Dave gets a better after board than Randy, but still, being on the play is better than sideboarding. For example, yeah. you you would choose to not slide to be on the play. Having the extra cages makes being on the draw not nearly as bad. You yeah. Just don't, the turn one oath is not as big of a threat because you have a bunch of one drops in your deck that beat it, that defeat it. Yep. On the draw, if Dave, I mean, it's tough because Dave really needs to draw mental misstep, force of will, or the mind break trap to have a confident keep. I mean, you, you're you're always even if you had turn one double managing like you had game one, you're not confident when you keep. A hand without a pitch counter against a you know combo, yeah. but under a lot of pressure to have a a hand that does something very quickly, like a hand that you saw that game. While I think it was keepable, that that hand is not, I don't think going to beat a lot of Dave's draws. Yeah, uh, especially well. Looks like we're going back to the game here. The opening hand being the the early game here. <laughs> I like how vintage so, some vintage matchups. You know, the the opening hand's the early game. Turn one and turn two are the mid game. <laughs> Randy's opening hand is really good. Yeah, he has the turn one oath, but Dave's opening hand is awesome. Randy's going to play turn one oath. Dave's going to force it. Dave's going to then get to Ancestral. And is Dave going to keep that hand? Oh, yeah. That hand's not even remotely close to a mulligan, I don't think. I mean, I mean it's it's Island Ancestral double forceable with blue cards. Actually... Would I would choose to have, like if I could choose my if I could choose to have this hand every game against Randy I would I think just because like what are the odds that you ancestral to no lands you even have a mana drain if you draw one land and you have two expensive cards to just pitch to force a well so Dave has to be pretty happy about this hand Randy's happy about his though he's got like one or two artifact mana too many I guess the problem is I feel like happy, knowing that you have to force a well the thought sees is not great it's not but I I think this hand is like well above average for Dave. Because it's not like Randy's deck usually presents three threats, and Thought Seize into Threat is still kind of stopped by this, even if you have to force a will it. Now, if Randy had mental missteps in his deck. <laughs> yeah, that would be a little dicier. Yeah. When Josh Utterlayton's, you know, combo deck from the first three weeks, he played basically this deck without oaths. He had, yeah, he had mental missteps in his deck. I still think they would have kept in the face of mental misstep here, but it's still... It would be less appealing. So my guess is the Sphinx is the first to go because if you draw Lotus, you can, you know, slam a Jace. We've seen Consecrated Sphinx do some good work <laughs> in conjunction with Force of Will this match. <laughs> that's why that's why you play blue creatures as your finisher. I mean, it justifies playing expensive blue cards to some degree. Like situational blue cards getting pitched to Force, it's not an invalid argument. It's not a reason to play a card, but. If there was a card at the same power level as Sphinx that wasn't blue, obviously it'd be much worse oh. even in decks that could cast it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, if, you, if, if what your deck needs is a, is a finisher, it's got to be blue. There's just no yeah. question. That's one of the reasons Jace is so good, too. So, Dave, you know, just leading with Sapphire into Ancestral here. Really hoping to draw... He was hoping to draw an island immediately so he could just have Drain up, but this is still going to be pretty good. As long as he draws a land here, he's in pretty good shape. Well, he didn't draw an actual land, but he drew Jet, which still lets him play top. I yeah, still think Dave's in very good shape here, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he still has double Force of Will, and now he can top upkeep to find a second land for Drain. Now you can just have Forces and Drains for days. And Randy has Vamp, so Vamp is going to cost Randy his draw step, because I think Randy is probably going to have to end up... I don't know, I would be inclined to Vamp for Necro here. 
He has to. I, I 100% agree. I was. Yeah. He, he 100% has to. Uh, has to bend. Well. So it looks like Dave's magic online might have crashed. We'll be back shortly. I mean, that's why we have extra time on the clock. So what, what, what do you think about Randy vamping for Mind's Desire? So upkeep vamp for Mind's Desire, tap Sapphire to, or tap Pearl to cast Mana Vault, play Lotus. If Dave forces the Lotus, you don't get to Mind's Desire, but if he doesn't force the Lotus, you get to Mind's Desire for five? I don't think it's enough. Five is pretty good in this deck. It's definitely not as much of a guaranteed kill. It's slightly better against Force of Will. Yes, what if oh, sure. I mean, I, I think that his... He has to... It's not immune to Force of Will. Dave can still Force of Will the Lotus or the Mana Vault, depending on which order Randy plays them in. But it is... Sl there are, like, you know, if you cast Lotus Necro, your, your Necro is getting forced, you know, 100% of the time. If you cast Lotus Mind Desire, maybe the... Well, I guess in either world... Dave might force the Lotus. So I wonder I wonder if it's better to actually do that. Because if, if you assume Dave's going to force the Lotus half the time, and the other half of the time he's not, it's still probably better to go for Mind's Desire, because then the half the time he doesn't force the Lotus, you get to Mind's Desire instead of Necro. Yeah, but how but, often do you miss off Mind's Desire? It's a lot, right? Desire for five is not is it not bad. On the other hand, if, if Dave doesn't have force, you just took your win percent chance from like ninety nine or or from ninety to like much much less than ninety. Like you right. Know, I mean, so, mine's there for five. How many cards in his deck does he actually want to hit? There's three oaths. Um, let me take a look. Since we have a little time, I'll, I'll count it out. Let's see. <laughs> uh, there's three oaths. Bargain. Uh, Tendrils one. is getting pretty close. What was that one? Tendrils is getting close if you hit a couple more spells. Oh, it's not sure. there, but it's close. Uh, Gristlebrand, obviously very good. Time Walk Ancestral. But then there's all the tutors, which actually aren't great to hit off Mind's Desire. They're okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that Necro is just the overall best play. Even Like, if you took the value of every play and multiplied it out, you know, the expected value of every play, assuming Randy has Force, assuming he doesn't have Force, assuming he forces a specific thing, Necro is still probably the overall best, even though in this situation it's not going to work. Uh, or Randy could just like draw for his turn and try, try to do something. But I think it, knowing that Dave didn't hit a land drop here, you have to try to get something out before manager hits, right? Yeah, I'm trying to. I was trying to think that that is Randy better off seeing a draw phase just in hopes that he doesn't actually have to use the Lotus or something. I, I... Yeah, that seems. Randy's expectation of just drawing a random card off the top of his deck and it being relevant is pretty low. I yeah, think he I, has I, it's hard to imagine any play, but I think he's going to try to get Necropotence. Especially because, like, we're in Necropotence, so... <laughs> it's his avatar everywhere. Right. Dave, Dave letting the vamp resolve, which makes perfect sense. Your, your hand is pretty much covered. So now, we're speculating that it's Necro... Oh, I guess Bargain is just better than Necro. Sure. It's, it's like the same thing, but... Oh, right. Well, s sort of. I'm trying to think if there's a situation where now nah, I guess bargain is better because it, I'm leaving, I don't know because you get to you have you more top decks yeah you have less fewer top decks if this gets countered because you have a greater chance of winning if it resolves but I think if it resolves your win your win shares of necro are pretty high too Dave is a pretty interesting choice of whether he wants to counter the lotus here if I were Dave I would not counter the lotus I don't think. Because I think it's unlikely that Randy has a desire of just three cards left, and if he has only three cards left, you can counter one of the other mana sources. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't count on the Lotus. I would... I mean, I, I don't think I would if I were in Dave's spot. Obviously, we can... We, we, you know, we're the all-seeing eye here, so... Right. <laughs> but I, I like Dave's play of not countering it. Do you think that the fact that Dave owns the original art for Necropotence influenced... Randy's decision on what to tutor for? Hmm. That's actually a good question, because I think it might... Yeah, uh, I mean, it, you could definitely figure that maybe somehow Worth made Magic Online Necropotence friendly for William somehow. It's possible. So Dave still has another interesting option here. Do you counter the Mana Vault? Because now you have to be thinking of Mind's Desire. Now it's plausible that Randy tutored for it, but... I think given you have two Force of Wills, there right. are a lot of cards Randy could hit off Desire. You could just force that. It's not like Desire right. just went through the game. 
Yeah, you're just happy to get the Lotus in the yard. And What do you think about Force of Willing the Bargain? I think it's a good play. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I would actually probably pitch manager in at this point. I mean, you don't know what your top cards are. He's not going to need two managers. Well, he I don't think so. Wow, I'm surprised by that also. I think one of the ways you put the game away is topping into a land and then next turn playing a land jace, like land land jace. So I would probably pitch the drain. I think Dave's a heavy favorite to win this game, even if he doesn't, though. Like, no matter what he does. Like, he tops upkeep to try to set up drain. He, Dave still has two counter spells left. <laughs> I mean, assuming yeah. he can find a land here. Obviously, there are worlds where Dave misses on land and Randy goes like, oath, oath. But Randy can't even cast very many spells. Right, and Randy's taking an extra turn, so it's actually a six-turn clock, not a nine-turn clock, because the mana vault. Yeah, that's true. That That is actually a reason not to play Bargain as well. See if Dave hit the island here. He did not, but he hit Spell Snare, and one of Randy's best outs is Oath, so that's actually not horrendous. I think Dave would have kept Island if he had one, obviously, because drains just having double drain up is better, but yeah, hitting Spell Snare means that that cuts into the ways Randy wins the game, even if Dave is missing lands. And Dave now gets to look at one additional card end of Randy's turn. I think Dave's in fine shape here. Uh, I think pretty big favorite. Have you played much with Spell Snare in this format? I haven't. I've I had it in a couple decks that I was playing, like one Spell Snare, and I kept cutting it. It just there were too many decks where it wasn't good, and even the decks where it was like good against in quotes. It, you have like a one to two turn window per game where it's good. I don't know. I, I don't love the, the the card, but this is also a deck with just all counter spells. So yeah. I guess it's if you want all counter spells, yeah. Yeah, I've been I, in a weird. I was having a weird spot on this card because I've I've really liked it in modern. Figure I feel like I've liked it more than everyone else. People are always telling me to cut them, and then people are playing it in Legacy and Vintage, and I just don't like it at all. Yeah, I, I don't like it in either of those formats either. I, I mean, I also play more proactive decks than this deck, which makes Spell Snare worse, I think, because I'm more likely to tap out. I have a lot more turns where I just am doing stuff instead of like worrying about having five counter spells up. And you play a lot of proactive decks too, like you like playing Delver decks, and I, I think that you'd rather have like, yeah, Days, Spell Pierce, Force of Will, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think people like the Spell Snare because Tarmogoy is such a problem in, for Delver decks. And... It's true. So, Randy, I think, wisely did not cast the Duress here. You you might as well wait until you're going to present a threat in the same turn. Grin, you're choked on mana, but giving your opponent an Oath to uh, Orchard token is pretty risky. Yeah, it actually matters. Yeah, because Randy's out is to draw, like, five good cards in a row. He needs a lot of them. And with three tokens, <laughs> he didn't have the time. You make it sound so bad. Five good cards in a row. He's got a lot of good, powerful cards in his deck, though. He does. And to be fair, it's not five. It might be just four. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not much less than that. I mean, I guess if Dave never finds a blue mana, he can only cast Force, but if what are Dave's blue cards that aren't that aren't uh, mana? Like, what cards is Dave finding? Is he finding Graft Digger's Cage to stop Oath, or more Force of Wills, or a Back to Base Sticks to reduce Randy's mana? Like, I guess Dave could just be on all Jaces and Consecrated Sphinxes. Yeah, he doesn't have a ton of blanks. I mean, Trinket I mean, Mage is... Trinket Mage gets Lotus here. Trinket Mage yeah. is actually good. And yeah, it's much it's Cage, too. It's, it's pretty good. So Dave's topping main phase, because if he saw an island as the third card, the one he didn't see, he would tap top to draw it. Randy dead in just a number of turns here. See you, Brass. Not super relevant. I w Do you think Randy's regretting his deck choice at this point? <laughs> I was I mean, I was literally about to say I'm not real impressed with this burning oak deck. <laughs> yeah, I thought about playing it, but I don't know, I've actually played this deck a lot, but I don't know, it felt like against people who are playing a lot of cards like, you know, Delbert-ish decks and Stacks decks, like, I I don't love it. I like it against, like, blue decks. Not maybe blue decks that are just literally all counter spells, but blue decks that are actually with, like, playing Lightning Bolt and cards you don't care about. Right. But Randy, Randy didn't play against any of those, right? I mean, he played against <laughs> Dredge that had great draws and two mono-blue control decks. Yeah, I successfully saved myself from regretting my deck choice too much this time. Yeah, I mean, whenever you've won your last round that you played, you can't feel terrible. It's true. Oh, yeah. So Dave playing a Mana Crypt because there's just no way he loses the race, I guess he might need it for something? I'm not sure exactly why he played Mana Crypt there. Uh, it could involve what's on top of his deck somehow. Rage. A Repeal, maybe? That's the only card I can think of. Yeah, it seems unlikely, but... 
So Dave, clearly not going to force a will the brainstorm. Plus, if Randy brainstorms and misses, Randy knows he's just dead. <laughs> yeah, Randy gets to go duress oath this turn, which is not going to be enough, but is at least going to be something. I mean, that's Randy's best line, right? Put back Chrome Mox, Mox Ruby, play Mox Opal, duress, take the... D actually, realistically, duress, then concede, because Dave yeah. has double counter spell up for oath, and, and then we'll have enough... You know, Randy knows his next two draw steps are blanks at this point. Yeah, the duress concede is... It is pretty classic. Yeah. Might as well play the Opal, I guess. Forbidden Orchard was definitely not free this game. I think that the deck is better with Orchards and Oaths in it, but if the if that Orchard had been a City of Brass, Randy would have had a number of more draw steps to, to go here instead of having none. Yeah, he would have had more draw steps if he went for Necro instead of Cargan. It's also true. I'm not sure what was right. I, I don't know how... Yeah. I have no idea what the ratio is of how often you win with Bargain compared to Necro once it resolves. Like, Yeah. I, I suspect Necro would have done the trick too, but Randy was maybe it was that maybe the main thing is that Randy was at such a low percentage against a Force of Will that he might as well go for the higher payoff one. Right, so, and of course, we haven't done the math on the whole Minds Desire thing, but no, I think we did. <laughs> well, I mean, we knew how many cards there were. I don't know how yeah. I like. <laughs> no, uh, so Dave letting duress resolve, which I I think is right. I mean. There's nothing that you can force. Like, if you force duress, there's, you're not opening yourself up to any good possibilities. You might as well just let him take the force, and then you keep your mana drain. Randy now seeing his inevitable defeat, I believe, because he... What's on top of his deck? Two Nothing. moxes. Two moxes. So he goes to five, then he gets pinged down to four, then he gets attacked down to two, then he gets pinged down to one, then, yeah, so... I guess yeah. Randy maybe gets one extra draw step. Is that right? He has to take the spell snare here and say go, right? Yeah, so Randy gets one extra draw step at one life, not able to use City of Brass. Where yeah. I guess he could draw Wheel of Fortune. Maybe he, maybe I think he actually has to take take the Force of Will and hope to draw Wheel or Time Twister on your last draw step. Because Oath on your last draw step doesn't do anything anyway. Right. Taking the spell snare and casting Oath here to force the Force of Will doesn't do anything, does it? No, because then you then you just die. Because then you, you you give him an extra Orchard token. So, yeah, yeah, I think Randy was pretty much just dead. So, looks like Dave advances to 3-3, which is actually a very live record here. He might be able to, like, 2-1 into, into playoff contention. These are tight. Uh, These are very tight. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, in a round-robin tournament with only 10 people, the, the records are going to end up pretty close to each other. Yeah. Randy, Randy falling to 2-4 and four there, which means he's got a 3-0 and then hope to win some playoff matches or ha and have everything else break right. Like, I'm sure there's the right combination of distributed wins and losses that locks out all the 5-4s, right? Isn't there? There's got to be some combination. I mean, I, I haven't actually looked at all the permutations. but Yeah. So uh, you are either going to be tied with me or Steve at the end of the night? Is that how this works? That is correct. I'm going to be tied with one of you two based on how my match against Steve Benning goes, which I'm actually going to be starting pretty shortly as soon as Randy gets on here. Looks like we'll maybe take a quick break and uh, we'll switch out for Randy, I believe is the plan. All right, cool. All right. Good luck on your match. Wish me luck. Yep, you just did. <laughs> <laughs>